Alright, so today we start down a whole new road of adventure. So Mark 1 was a CNC router that I built. It looked like this. I shot a YouTube video on it. I might reference it in some conversation, but that YouTube video doesn't exist. I never finished it because it never was worth showing to you guys because I kind of always thought I would completely rip it apart, upgrade many components, and go with it this way. So it's gonna be kind of some of the ideas will be taken, but the whole drive components, we're getting away from timing belt. But anyways, I'll show some B-roll here while I'm going through some of these parts of that. There'll be a nice time lapse. Anyways, let's start. Before we start building this, we're gonna like look at the components I have collected. And uh, kind of go with that. It's a mix mash. Some things are new to me, some things I use from the old one, some things are kind of gonna be designed to be upgraded, like the steppers. But anyways, just start at the beginning of the pile. Six inch aluminum channel. This is what I'm gonna build the gantry out of. It's gonna be cut to, cut to length. Half inch by six inch aluminum flat stock or I guess a flat bar. This is gonna be cut into plates for the actual router itself, Z axis, and gonna be used for two, I guess, base plates I'm gonna call them for the gantry. Couple smaller pieces of aluminum I picked up along the way uh, when I bought those out of the scrap bin. Who knows what they could be used for. For the main bed and rails, I got rails, but I guess you can call it the chassis of the router. The frame, it's gonna be out of two inch by quarter um, angle iron. I have 40 feet of this, not including this, a couple of scraps like this. That's gonna be all welded up. For the main linear slides, we're going with these uh, 16 mil round supported, uh, I can't remember what these are, it's linear, linear slides. And then uh, the previous router I used these are, to go along with those thousand mil, we have these 400s, which are gonna be used for the Z axis. So I have eight of these polymer or synthetic style glides. And then I also have a dozen of these cheapo ball bearing ones, which generally come with them from AliExpress. These I used on my last build, not so interested in them, so I bought these. Never put them in, but I have another four set coming for the third axis. And these are what I'm gonna build it with and try these out because I just didn't like these because they're so cheap. So that'll be a new thing. To go along with our uh, thousand mil glides, I have three thousand millimeter ball screws, pillow blocks, whatever you call this, and some couplers that I probably won't use. Got some timing belt and pulleys on order for that. This is what's gonna move the main axis, two on the Y, one on either side of the gantry, then one going across the gantry for X. I have one assembled here to show you guys. Got the extra pillow blocks and couplers that came with, still in their packaging. 400 mil variant for the Z axis. For the Mark I, I used this breakout board, driver board, whatever you wanna call it. I wouldn't call it a motion controller, that's pretty crude in the sense for this being a motion controller, but it's like a USB based breakout board. We're upgrading this, won't be using this for this build. But in the, within the same kit, we're still using these 2.4 amp, I believe, NEMA 23 steppers, which I'm going to obviously have the ability to upgrade to 34s if I need to in the future. And we're still going to be using the step, the drivers that came in the kit for these four of these. Bunch of assorted metric hardware. Nuvin Sun, whatever you want to call it, CNC, five axis. Uh, a little bit more expensive, more options. Still in the cheap space, definitely not something as nice as a smooth stepper, which might be a future upgrade. I'm not sure. This should do me a lot better, more options. Limit switches for limits and homing. Oh, I have the two drag chains I used in the Mark 1 and two additional drag chains, chains because there's going to be more cabling in this version. Both a 36 volt for the drivers and a 24 volt for the control. 
I believe the voltage needed. If not, I'll get different power supplies. For the spindle, I went with a 2.2 kilowatt water-cooled spindle off of AliExpress straight from China. I already bench tested it. Looks great. Coming with that came with water pumps, some tubes, an ER20 collet set, some of the brush so I can build my own dust collector. As well as what some people would call the inverter, but I wish to call the VFD. Nice in China, nice in plastic. Should work just perfectly for our, our use case here. since I've done any work because I've been at work but we're back now and as you would have seen there I finished the z-axis assembly the first time I assembled it. it'll probably be tearing down and then rebuilt or at least tearing down just to align the axes to be square with each other and to try and get the machine as true as possible once it's assembled but for now I mean Yeah, the slides that will go on the, the gantry. So basically what I'm gonna do now is with this assembled like this, I'm going to lay out the gantry. And basically we're working back from the Z-axis to I guess the gantry I'm gonna call the X-axis, I think. Now I think about it. And then, so we have the gantry assembled, then we measure up and build the frame for the base and to hold the X-axis linear, linear slides and Weld the gantry together because doing some aluminum welding, never done that before. And then, uh... all right, so some thought treating progress has been made. No actual drilling or cutting has been done yet. But so we just got the Z axis on the Y axis. I can't remember which one we're gonna make the gantry. It'll be one of them. But anyways, basically these are pretty much aligned, like not bad. They taper off one way a little bit, but we'll get that adjusted when it gets to final assembly. Basically, this is what I'm thinking so far, is these six inch by six inch plates will be welded halfway and halfway on the end of this. <clears throat> and same over here. This channel will be cut roughly in the middle there. And uh, there'll be two slides on either side. Boom, boom. And then the house for the uh, Ball screws are going to be on the outside of ball screw house here, slide glides here. And uh, there won't be enough room to take this axis off at whole because of the way I built the axis to you couldn't. So to tear this down and to build it up, what, you, what has to be done is these four have to come out off of this house. This has to slide off, slide up, slide off, either way will work. And then you can unbolt the back plate from the house on this ball screw and the four slides and then this z-axis comes off in two parts and then if you wanted you can take these slides off just in this little gap here like that one at a time I was going to make it tighter but i realized the way i already made that doesn't account for it and having a bit extra room on the gantry like it's going to be an extra pretty much three inches in overall side to side i'm like I don't think it's one I'm not up for it being, um, it has to be asymmetrical as much as I can because OCD, but really you only need it on one side. So it'll be symmetrical however. And then once these that's is cut and it's all, these are drilled on and that's done, I'm gonna bolt these on and then I'm gonna weld it to try and maintain a little bit more rigidity in this guy. 
when it welds so it doesn't bow out too bad. Hopefully it won't. And uh, then there'll be chunks of this, 3 8 plate. I guess it's not really plate, it's extrusion. Flat bar. Weld it on kind of like that to give it a little bit more um, twisting rigidity, I guess. And then that'll be the gantry set up. And then we can measure up and draw out our uh, our table and uh, holders, I guess. But anyways, back to drilling and tapping. Alright, so this is pretty much going to be the gantry setup. I got everything done. I got the runner plates done. I got the brackets done. You saw a little bit, a little bit. I've done all this. The rails have already been aligned when they went on the first time. They're indicated, not indicated, but they're um, marked where to go back exactly. The Z-axis setup works out great. The whatever the gantry axis is going to be also works. So basically now it's time to give her the first assembly. And of course these are welded parts and I've never done, except for that little test piece before I start filming here, never done, uh, it's a little bit roasty, toasty, never done aluminum stick welding before. So uh, let's hope I don't fuck up this like, probably like $135 worth of aluminum stock in Canadian pesos. So uh, let's give her a whirl. Worst welding experience of my whole entire life so far. Never trying stick weld aluminum. It's a friggin' shit show. You know, going in just like, you know, regular mild steel welding, nope. Did a little bit of a quick internet research, got into the preheating, made sure I'm doing it right. So I think we got it to bond, but it looks like absolute rat shit. So to recap, carbonizing flame over top of what you want to weld get all that soot on there, go to a normalized flame, and then uh, wait till the carbon, all the carbon burns off, because that's around 400 degrees, and that's kind of like a good preheat temperature. Get your aluminum before you even try and use this rod, and it was just like gummy, 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 no penetration until I did this, and I think like this last one, I overdid it, and it's like undercut, but we'll see when the slag gets shipped off. But would not recommend. Still got to put the side pieces on, and I have, all, I have one little rod left, and this stuff goes fast. What is this anyways? It's 1 8 40 43. Yeah, <laughs> garbage. This, pr this, this process is garbage. Anyways, I'm going to clean this up the best I can. wonder if I can ask Buddy tomorrow, pull a favor in, and TIG weld the rest of this stuff. But don't try and do this. If I knew this is how this was going to go, I would have just said fuck no and gone and bolted it or wait till buy an aluminum TIG welder like oh my goodness don't do it catch you on the next one all right guys so it's kind of time to change a bit of pace here we're going to kind of take a break on some of the mechanics and the gantry until I can get it welded up right so uh, we're going to start on the control circuitry and electronic side of things so to house everything, I kind of skipped over this part in the video because, you know, didn't think you guys would be too interested in building a box. If you want to see a box build, I got lots of time where I build boxes. Like that. Anyways, so we're going to have a big back pan here. 
a little one on the bottom. This is going to be a fan. This is going to be some filtered air coming in. These are for cables in and out, which we'll seal up later. So a little e-stop button up here, up here in the top. We do in a plexi, use plexi. Actually, I hope this is Lexan or some material that's not actually plexi, so I can cut it and drill it. But that'll be over top. We put in an on-off switch and then two indicator lights for both control and power circuit because I'm doing basically power for the spindle and then power for everything else. So on the bottom pan, we're gonna have two different power sources coming in, both 110, then wired up one in each. We got a two pole contactor, one for each. Um, off the control power, a 24 volt and a 36 volt power supply, five axis stepper, fan, four axis drivers, little VFD. Alright, so we're basically done the main back pan and everything on it. It's all wired up. You're seeing the time lapse right now. I got some basic labeling on everything and no, I didn't have the right size labels and it kind of all looks like shit. But anyways, going here we got our spindle, our three leads for the three phase spindle plus a ground with the shield of the VFD. And then we have A axis, Z axis, Y axis, A axis, stepper motor outputs which just come up here. Obviously to the stepper motor drives right here, just like that. They're, all, they're powered by the 36 volt DC power supply, which is on the bottom here. Everything's nicely grounded. Going over, then we have a ground. Um, three outputs that I take, took off here. There's still more. A um, couple grounds here bumped off here. Then these are gonna be for all the limits and homing proximity switches. We got a probe, which I may or may not use. Then up here we got 12 volts and a stop input on here, which will be for that guy. And uh, yeah, everything's got some basic labeling on it, just because not so much for me, more just to look nice because I do own the labeler, but not the right size labels for this stuff. Anyways, we're gonna install this here. Then we're gonna put the ends on this guy, install it, finish the wiring and uh, possibly do the first bit of commissioning, if not jump back to some mechanical stuff. But that's, let's just get at it. All right, good and proper change of pace here. Out of the electronics world for now. So back here, we got the Z axis on the slides and the ball screw for, I can't remember which axis, the gantry axis, that one. So I was mentioning full extension, playing with the spindle placement to figure out the height that I'm going to have to build up the other axis. Well, here's another mock-up, just fit, figuring out my sizes and everything. We're gonna start cutting some angle iron and building it. But first I'll do some quick explanation of what I'm trying to do here. This is the world's worst YouTube sketch and I'm not gonna do anything to make it better. Might edit this out, who knows? Anyways, we got our dimensions and uh, yeah, this is getting edited up. All right, so here's some Z axis. Kind of trick math in my head. So I measured her full extension from the bottom of the gantry, which will be right here, out to when the spindle is mounted all the way down for the full reach in this holder. And from here to here is 18 inches. From the bottom of here, we go down another two inches and that's the bottom of our angle iron runner because below the gantry, there is our, well, support block like this. And then our we glide right that, so right here needs to be 16 inches above the bottom of the table. Here's my sketches with bad everything on it, but uh, yeah, let's build it. I tried to babble about what 
I always want to build and I just, it'd be much easier just to show you. So I cut out maybe like 90% of the pieces. So in front of you here, this square is X by Y and it's upside down right now so the final product, it'll actually be the other way around. It's just easier to lay it on the floor like this. And then each side are the two risers for the gantry rails. Um, they're kind of backwards, but they'll look nice and they'll sit on the back of each. Because of course the spindle actually sticks off like center off six inches off the gantry. So that's why those are 42 long and it's 48. So if there's that stick out so the work will be in front. And it'll be kind of a blank space in the back, which is whatever. And then I'll cut some, some um, just some kind of like uh, gusset arms that'll go on the back for those guys and keep rigid. Uh, the front will probably do something in the future. And the ones I haven't cut, uh, I'm hoping to do two pieces this way. And that's just more mounting and, well, rigidity for the actual, uh, well, the waste board and the table and such. So I'm just going to tack this together, make sure she's per square. And here, I, I kind of ran the straight edge in a level, not, not so much a level, but a straight edge around the floor and on the floor in the shop to see kind of where the, uh, the best location was to weld it flattest. It doesn't need to be level, it just needs to be flat, right? So, and I kind of came up with this area here. So I'm gonna give the floor one, one more go over, get some of the paint speckles off of it, and uh, pack her up. We got some stuff from AliExpress here. Not everything we wanted. A little bit of a mess up. Got the fourth one of these we need. Got some of our timing belt and pulleys. Let's just put all these set screws back in the bag. So it looks like the seller messed up because I ordered four sets in total. One that looks like this, which is correct and they were drilled correctly the way I asked for the z-axis and then I actually ordered three of these for the rest of the ball screws which is a two to one 15 and 32 so you know two to one ratio um, and they only sent me one because they probably just didn't look at that little three so I messaged the seller and we'll we'll see what happens but other than that they look great so I mean this will allow me to fully assemble the z-axis once we get the motor rests and this will let me do the x-axis once we get the motor and then we'll just be waiting to make the the uh, y move. We also got some end mills, just thought I'd share because they're CNC related. Um, yeah, you know, Chinese stuff, different colored coatings. Not up on my literature on what the heck uh, all the fancy coatings are good or bad for or how much is fake and how much what's actually good for anything. But anyways, on with it I say. Your welding is done, both steel and aluminum. Don't ask me about aluminum welding. Look, there's my best weld right there. And then they just get worse from there on out and pretty globby because, you know, undersized welding for the size of aluminum. You know, we gotta preheat and do all that crap. Like, don't even look at that. Like, we're not looking at that. Uh, anyways, so yeah, gantry, frame, it's time to, mount some stuff, align some stuff, 
drill and tap some holes in here. And then we shall uh, give her a push back and forth, mount some uh, ball screws, and then disassemble and paint. Right on. Boom, pretty decent progress. These are bolted down, boom and boom. Uh, I've set up the first ball screw on this side already. And uh, yeah, that went actually pretty well. So of course, just the pillow block bolts down, bolts onto the gantry. It's bolt down, we got the pulley just to make it easier to turn. Wish I got more pulleys, but they didn't send me all of them. So yeah. Now we're just working on the other side. I was about to say the gantry, but we're not. Um, to do this, I've just got it bolted down, moved this way. I'm gonna take a measurement off here just to match that side, and then drill and tap. I'm gonna somehow move it back while it's still bolted on both sides. Move it back to about here, just so that this is perfectly parallel with this, and it's just the easy way. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be within a pretty tight tolerance, but this being bolted up and moved within an inch is going to, uh, well, allow us to do that. So once we get that all bolted up, then we uh, do a couple last little setups on the frame and she's off to paint. And we start working on the uh, Z-axis proxy switches and assembling the gantry and all that good stuff. All right, so the time's come where I gotta figure out how the hell I'm gonna wire this gantry. One option, use this track I had bought in before, kind of always thinking I'd rebuild the CNC. Pretty sleek looking into it. Um, other option, build a big old like snake, snake dick that reaches over this thing and well, looks like shit. One's quick and dirty and then one's time working, time consuming is going to require and weld a couple more tabs on here if I do it. But I came up with a kind of idea I'm gonna try first, which is to uh, put this in here like this and mount this on a little block, just so it, uh, sorry, framing you fuck. Um, yeah, love that guy. Anyways, sits right here like that, and then, well, moves back and forth with the gantry. So, I guess the next question is, can you cut a...
right, so we've made some pretty decent progress on the Z-axis. Of course, we already had it pretty much assembled. Um, but now, we have the limit switches, or the proximity limits, and home in place. One limit, one home for this is the back. So basically, uh, to give you a reference, these are the four holes that this spindle holder mounts in. And then, of course, the six inch gantry will sit like here. So basically, what we got is um, on this plane here, we have four, or excuse me, three M4 um, bolts. And we just, just bolt straight through a tapped hole and then cut off on this side to make it flush. And down at the bottom, for the top, we have a limit and a home. And then at the top, we have a limit. I'll, uh, you can see them how they come through the side right there, the home and the limit, just offset by like a quarter inch. And then there's just one limit for when she hits the bottom of her travel. So, just got one of the timing belt pulleys in my hand, or in the drill, and then the other here. So let's just give her a... Also, I have these hooked up to the total power supply, just like what will it will be on. So getting close to the bottom limit there, coming up. We'll have the one limit before we bottom out by about a quarter inch. And I don't know if you can see that very well, but now that indicator shows that that is now active. Now if we go the other way. We should hit the home about a quarter inch or three sixteenths before the limit. Home is the bottom and then limit should become next. Boom. And there she, there you go. So the Z-axis pretty much, uh, it's pretty much done in my book. Uh, I will take this off one more time just to show you how the limits are done. So right after I'm bolting these four bolts, you can just slide this ray off. So if you ever have to take the spindle off, you can just take the spindle off. And the only other thing, you'll have your water connections on the top of the spindle and you have your uh, aviation plug. Other than that, so these are how the two limits stick up. And just because they weren't long enough to use the back plate to bolt in, I put a little plate right there just for them to bolt, just to like nut into and then bolted, the, or not, bolted that into this plate. And uh, yeah, they're mounted the same and I thought I'd offset the ones in the, the moving piece for so home and limit. And uh, yeah. You know, it's a little bit tacky, but I mean, it's nice and hidden, and I'm happy with it. So, there's the Z-axis for you. All right, as you saw, she's painted up. We got this, the gantry, pretty, the gantry and ball screw, glides, slot, whatever you want to call it, linear rails. Um, both the dawn to the frame, got the spindle mock-up that we did, um, resting. It's, it's only about an eighth of an inch out of its resting height and it's all the way down with the spindle in the middle of the collet so that that would places us um, four inches this is approximately four inches above the frame so of course if we really wanted to cut something really uh, thick well I'm planning on putting a uh, one inch non non removable or non replaceable even though you could replace it wasteboard on here on top of that, I plan on mounting a three quarter inch or one inch, whatever I have, um, MPF waste board with th threaded inserts, which would be redone whenever you need to, well, refinish slash replace your waste board. So basically this four inches, so if we have one inches, one inch plywood on the bottom, and then we have three quarters of an inch waste board plus tool equals a good working condition. But if you needed to reach down and mount something on, really say if it, it's something you have for whatever reason, mount on the one weight, only an inch of waste board, and it was a really short tool, you could move the spindle down in its holder, and you could still touch pretty much any tool to the frame if you needed to. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna take this off, it's not just resting here, and then we're going to cut both waste boards, well, actually, sorry, just the one waste board for now, and then, uh, Start possibly looking at limits and how I want to do them for the gantry.
Moving forward, some decent progress here on the limits for the gantry. Um, these will be at the acting limits for the Y axis, but I mean, they work off the gantry for the X. So if I ever misspeak, that's why. Anyways, so yeah, on the back here, we have limit, we have limit and home. They act, they're going to use these two bolt heads. I drilled and tapped into these pillow, into these blocks and uh, yeah, we're just getting ready to install the mount for this one over here. They're just a nice piece of aluminum. Ta-da, ta-da. Drilled and tapped in the bottom side. And Bob's your auntie. So. On these limits. I'm uh, gonna try on the on uh, everything but the gantry, so the Z and the Y axis. Oh, yes, Y. Um, for the limits and stops, um, or I guess stop limit, whatever, and then home. Uh, I've done a system where the it passes over the prox sensor, so if anything were to fail, it wouldn't damage anything. Now for this, I've done it so they line up and I don't know what the clearances are gonna be like for these two, so this might have to change. Maybe not, gonna try it. And same thing over here. So everything is going well until first broken tap of the project. It's bound to happen. You know, couldn't get the drill in there because you know, using the drill to tap um, up against this rail and it torqued over. Ah, good times. working on this around other people and you know you want to talk about other things anyways yeah this was just buttoned up it is very full I think I might order a bigger one in the long run but she works um, yeah and I kind of wish I put a little bit bigger JB up here but we're going with what we have so we're gonna do shielded spindle output so because I want to use a 14 gauge on this side, this is 12 gauge here. For the spindle power, this just comes up unshielded, individual conductor, con conductors. And then here, once we start getting close to anything else that could be affected by um, the EMF it puts off, or whatever you want to call it, the flux interference, blah, blah, blah. We got the shield wrap under tape back up to here. These two are going to share the bottom half of the compartment here. We have, I made this guy. It'll go inside the JB to separate basically low voltage control and stepping from the spindle. And uh, Bob Durante.
Boom, I guess update time. Can't remember if I told you got the water cooling working. I think a couple of videos of that. You're good. Anyways, that's a simple concept. So I ordered the mounts for these 50 days ago and they've been in Canada supposedly for almost a month and I haven't seen them so I'm like all right today I'm like I'm this is my last thing I'm waiting on no more waiting I really need to build these so I'm like I built these out of this extra extra length off of that but anyways as soon as I built two of them mounted that one already was working on this one guess what shows up in the mail like I told myself for like a month as soon as I build them they're gonna show up in the mail so fuck me they did but anyways, I'm gonna use the two I built for the two on the back. Got the belts up, zinging tight. They don't have a real great tensioning mechanism except for just putting the belt on when it's a bit too far. I think it's gonna work just fine. But anyways, I'm gonna work on the two other axes with the mounts that I got off the internet. But we're gonna do some shimming and some sort of tightening mechanism, so we're gonna see. Also. I guess the update, the spindle now spins because that's hooked up because I did all this stuff in here. So I guess we'll just turn that on for a hot second and then press run. And she spins and the pump's going and usually uh, that's the indicator for flow and there you go. We also got the air filter on there. You know, gotta keep it clean in there. Boom, rest of the motor's mounted. Oh yeah, time to the last connection. Already did want the connections in the two JBs in that side. So it's as simple as four wires we left earlier. Bing bada boom baby, let's do some soldering. So that's it. Got a little bit of lube on the ball screws. Nothing on the slide jet. I don't think we need it for this type. Um, but anyways, it's time to figure out how to get this guy rolling with Mach 3 here. Uh, of course, I have it set up for my old Mark 1 CNC, as I would like to call it. So uh, I got to wrangle some drivers for that guy. And other than that, it's time to give her a go. All right, I'm not really sure exactly where we left off here, but uh, I've been doing some troubleshooting and finally making some decent progress. Done a fair amount of test cuts, worked out some problems. Big, big problems for accuracy wise so far is I'm not so sure about these synthetic sli um, slides for basically the rigidity factor. I'm wearing them very tight, which is very hard to move the axis then, so I got some graphite, dry graphite on there. Helps decent. I think we're gonna be good with that one. Had to swap out the top there if you didn't see that already. Got a different space in there and uh, different pulley on here because it just, it wasn't working. Um, what else might be new? Oh yeah, the other big problems I've been troubleshooting to get this thing going is my VFD here for my spindle. Uh, basically, First, it took me a bit to get it actually like working with Mach 3 in the card. Got it. My big thing there is since this is the knockoff Hong Yang, or I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, it's different and there's not as much literature. But anyway, just had to jump out a couple grounds. I uh, got it outside the enclosure now because before, when I'd even just plug this in or power this on while this was open with and connected to Mach 3, it would get a USB disconnect and there was just way too much interference because this knockoff and just the inverted type speed control because it's not really a very clean sine wave at all. Just too noisy. So anyways, I guess I'm just gonna end up, once I get one, putting the drives for the fourth axis right here and voiding that off and just running our three control wires for our spindle out to this guy, which I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet. 
I'll probably make an enclosure with a little bit of an expansion room. That'll go somewhere else over here. Not really sure yet. Also had to remove my shielded cap tire as far as, far as I could. That also seemed to help. And I'm getting some pretty good stability on that now. Um, yeah, so let's uh, jump into Mach 3 and see this thing move. Turn this on. Yeah. Jogging nicely. Everything. Spindle starts on command. Press F5. Press F5 again. She shut down. I got her set so that she just coasts down. But anyways, yeah, things aren't looking too bad for this at all. You see here in the corner in some clips where there's some test cuts. But basically my next step here is to get an enclosure for this guy, some kind, figure something out, even if it's just... set up worked really well with the inserts in the back and these here make this cut this is some pretty cheap Chinese plywood here uh, import so that's why it didn't turn out so great plus I didn't pay too too much attention to some of my tool paths where it didn't reach into the skinny parts of the letters but anyways this turned out well this turned out great um, these will have some work and different things possibly doing a fence and stuff like that but she runs I ended up being able to fix my big problem with the spindle getting a USB disconnect error. I don't think it really was this, the spindle drive in the end. I mean, it definitely puts off the noise and was the problem, but the solution for me wasn't to fix the problem, it was to change computers. Pulled out my laptop, got everything configured up on my laptop here. This will get a better like podium up front, but for now it's just plugged in here like this. And I found major problems with the shop computer with basically the hard, the only SSD that's in it, that's the boot drive and what everything's running off of is pretty much falling apart and has a bunch of corrupt sectors, which might be part of it, but also made it difficult for transferring everything over here because I couldn't just copy things because of it. So, or because of it, sorry, proper English. 
But anyways, this is working great now. I was able to do the table on here, do the surface on here, do that test cut there. From here, everything's looking good. I'm not really gonna play with this except for some cable management there in the end. But I really have to call this, it's been like two and a half months since I started this video and it's been a, probably a feature film. Um, in the future, we're gonna be first upgrading that motor to just a, just a bigger NEMA 23 because it's, it has the heaviest load to move uh, the head back and forth, I find, and it's roasty toasty. Um, other than that, we might be capping the back of the gantry just to get some flex out of it with this flat bar down here. And uh, other than that, there'll just be some tweaks. There's gonna be a fourth axis coming up. Uh, probably some more precision stuff about getting into uh, touch off probing for the Z height and auto squaring the gantry instead of me doing it manually. And uh, just some overall cleanup. Also a dust collector for the spindle. That'll be coming up, but yeah. If you have any questions, I will do my best to answer. And oh my goodness, what I said the first time when I built the first one, oh man, I'm so ready to build the second one way better. Now that I put the like magnitude more time into building the second one, I'm almost like, oh my goodness, there's so much things I would've done differently and done more proper. But hey, eventually there'll be a Mark III with a five axis on it and uh, well, we'll get there one day guys. Work with me here. Uh, constructive criticism, great. There's a lot of things I wish I did better on this. Maybe you have an even better take on it. But uh, yeah, sweet. All right, if you've made it this far, well, you've earned a cookie. Because so far it's been a feature film, going through the building of this. Um, yeah, there'll be a shorter compressed version of just an overview, not really looking at the construction of it, but just an overview of its functionality and such, and its use case um, in a later video. But I just gotta thank you for making it this far, and man, I learned so much. Hope you did too.